Hey everybody, my name is Rado, and today we're going to spotlight Let's Explore the Jungle with Buzzy, the Junior Field Trips game. I'm going to take a minute or two to just explain how to get this to run, because if you get this off Steam, it won't run in the proper way. You're just going to want to go ahead and download the, clo the newest version of ScumVM because that is the emulator that it uses and then you'll just click add game and then you'll browse to either C or whatever your hard drive is program files steam steam apps common sorry it's not fully listed there and then under the folder let's explore the jungle with fuzzy you click choose and then that adds the game and then I just leave everything here the same except for I decided to override it for high quality three times make sure aspect ratio correction and full screen is off a audio volume all of that is left alone make sure in your default options aspect ratio and, and full screen is off uh, for me I'm gonna have both the speech and subtitles turned on audio and everything else is left at the default settings and that's as much as you need to mess with as far as scum vm then you need to click start and then hit alt enter to go into full screen mode and that'll get it going so we've done two spotlights before of let's explore the airport and let's explore the farm. Now we're let's explore the jungle. Hi, I'm Buzzy the Knowledge Bug. Are you ready to explore the jungle? There are parts of three jungles here, all from different parts of the world. The Amazon area includes the jungles of South and Central America. It holds many neat things, like toucans and monkeys and even blue frogs. The African area has elephants and electric catfish and chameleons. In the Asian area, there are dragons and spitting fish, and even a plant that eats bugs. Why, there are just hundreds of things to see and do. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Now, interestingly, that intro seemed different than the first time I ran this game. So it might actually randomize this. And we're in a weird layout here. Because the only way this would make sense is if you were looking at a map. Standing on like the North Pole and looking towards the South Pole. So then Asia would be on the left instead of if you were on the South Pole. And if you're looking at the North Pole, Asia would have been on the right. And it would have been really easy for them to switch it that way. And then Africa could certainly always be in the middle. And then Amazon's is is on the right. If you're looking from the North Pole. But it should probably be on the left. Interesting choice there. I don't know if why you would do that though. It's not like it's uh, specifically alphabetical or anything. Africa and then Asia and then Amazon maybe. Yeah doesn't make a lot of sense so if you haven't watched the previous two spotlights what this is is effectively a digital version of an interactive board toy it's got several games in the time to play section but also it's got several locations just by default so if we pick something like Asia let's start here you zoom in and then you pick an area you zoom in a little bit more and then you may zoom in three or four more times even if you want to and can find a place to zoom in and anything you click on will then do some kind of animation not very educational by default it's just kind of different things and you will get several different animations sometimes uh, so you can click on multiple things. This is almost like if the game was targeting in a younger age than three even. That is the game 
the age that they recommend is three or older. And see, this seems a little too young to just have interactions without any educational value. At any point in this overlay screen, though, you can click what is this and hover over something. It'll tell you what it is. Of course, if the Asian elephant is walking through here, it, you can't stay still enough on it. And if you, you click on something, it'll take you to and. a full explanation and definition of something. Each of these blue words goes to a new definition, and you can hover over these specific words to help you read. Or you can just click read aloud and have the whole thing read. These birds are known for their fan-like tails, which they use to attract a mate. The females are actually called pea hens, and like the female cock of the rock, have dull feathers to make them hard to see when they sit on their nests. Also like the cock of the rock, it is the male that is the colorful one. Both males and females eat seeds, fruits, and bugs. But they are really not very picky and will eat almost anything. People have reported peacocks chasing each other all around the bamboo stalks. Then the peacocks just stop and walk away. Naturalists are still trying to figure out this odd behavior. Hmm. I wonder in the 22 years since this game has made has come out if they have figured out why. And then there's this globe that wasn't in the previous two games that... The peacock is found in the Southeast Asian jungle. Hmm. Seems like that is several words just cut and pasted together. And then we can click here and go back to that. Uh, if we click on index, you'll see that there is quite Bird a list here butterfly. of different vocabulary words that a child could learn. In fact, these are specifically more complicated and higher level vocabulary words than what we saw in Let's Explore at the Airport or Let's Explore at the Farm because they're talking about very specific animals that aren't really going to come up. For instance, a hot zen. I don't even know what a... A Hoatzin is, but here Smell. we have it here. Uh, also known as a stink bird, never heard of it. So this is the Hoatzin is found in the Amazon jungle. So that's yeah, that is just cut and paste, isn't it? Uh, so of the three, I I would specifically say kids would have to be very interested in birds and jungles, animals, uh, a lot to, to have enough interest in this. And you're teaching them particularly big words. I would say this is probably closer to a five, six year old uh, game minimum, just because this information's not going to come up. Uh, Maybe in some kindergarten class they would have a week where they talk about the jungle and it would come up. And then you're, anybody who had played this might have a very, uh, know Ma'am? a lot of things about that. But, but in general, unlike farm animals, which probably are going to be talked about at least once a week in the kindergarten or airport things, which are probably going to be talked about on frequent basis, uh, at least once a month, I would say. Uh, jungle things may not ever get talked about. Unfortunately, this game is so old, though, you can't print, so there's this tiny little pop-up from the emulator saying printing is disabled. That's never going to really work. That's It's a shame, but, I mean, they're never going to be able to figure it. Trying to figure out exactly how many scenes are here would be rather difficult, but I can definitely guesstimate that here alone we have three, four, like four screens at least, and of these four screens I could probably find uh, 
at least another four strings and that's just for the Asian jungle if we go over to the African jungle you're given one two three possibly four more screens uh, lots of things to click on uh, um, most of this all comes down to how interested the kid is I'd imagine the kid would play with this between five to thirty minutes uh, and if they're obsessed about it, they may want to come back and play with this game the next day for 5 to 30 minutes. And because kids are very repetitive and they like to do that, we can see there's another collection here of jungles. Uh, there is definitely a flaw here in covering the jungles because it's just trees everywhere. Uh, here you've got some people building a bridge and a monkey and what's in here another monkey and at any point you can click on Buzzy and get a little introduction of the area naturalists built this bridge so they could get a closer look at life in the canopy hmm. so it's not the biggest amount of it's not the largest amount of, of information but it's interesting nonetheless hmm. and natural seem to have dropped the bird there uh, and so most of the game game here is it's not really even a game, but then you can come to the time to play. Go ahead and type in your name. And it'll ask and you I, to type Buzzy in your the name knowledge first, bug, the will first keep track side. of your score as we play. Anything you do up to this point are is simply not going to uh, be saved. There's just no actual uh, no actual memory use there but you are given these five games hey let's play a game although calling book is barely just a game. pick one and away we go if you need any help just ask me buzzy the knowledge bug so for the three games there's always a trivia there's always a find it and there's always a coloring book and then the two down here are different games and if you were to get this junior field trips uh, three game combo off steam which is probably the best way to do it so you could have them play three different games and, and keep yourself from going crazy hearing the same sound effects over and over again uh, I would say you're probably getting a decent decent value out of this it's really hard to find edutainment games so sure you can hand somebody a cell phone and they can play something but will it really hey, uh, educate it at all uh, coloring here is a standard flood fill action so you click something and it just fills in almost all the areas although that that's got some slobber here we have an ant eater eating uh, eating ants and the ants are running away uh, there's some weirdness in the system because you can use this dropper to suck out color and place it here but there's no way to really combine colors so no right click or combination so there's actually no no reason to have all these things it seems like an unfinished ability like, like nothing here combines it just always overwrites if you don't like something you could do you have an undo and a redo so that's helpful and then you have a sponge to erase everything do you really want to erase all the colors yep and then you start again unfortunately again printing is disabled so uh, it's not the best uh, turnout and they give give you somewhere uh, up to this point somewhere been around 14 to 20 
see three so far. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, it seems about 14 here again. Uh, a, not a massive amount of coloring. Probably less than you'd get in a coloring book for kids. Although coloring books these days have become for adults more than kids. Uh, Ready to play another in. game? So All you gotta do is pick one. If this was a modern game, you could almost certainly take all the color elements out of every single scene and then just bring up an overlay and color back in the scene however you wanted. And that would be a nice feature, but people don't try to make edu educational or young kid games. They don't. The rating system is doesn't really seem to matter to most people, so... They just make everything M rated or teen or teen plus. If they are making an Hey, uh, let's see how you're doing. An E for everyone game or an E ten game, it's often because they're they're just trying to sell or push something really bad out there. Uh, so they keep record of how much you've done here. We can see there's 99 jump jungle jumble words there's 120 find it things to do and 100 uh trivia questions and the ant eater feeder goes on forever so uh you're getting ready to play another game a decent amount of all things. you gotta do is pick one all right so find it how hard do you want the game to be if you click find it on hard you will start you'll be given an item Let's yeah. play Find It! But you have to First, start on the main I, screen. Fuzzy the Knowledge Bug will choose something I know you can find back in the jungle. Then we'll buzz back over there and take a look. Keep your eyes open, and when you find what you're looking for, just click on it. Here's your first item. Now, let's see if you can find it. So we're looking for the snake. And down below is a picture of the item. Now you have to go find it. So I'm playing this on hard mode. So it just took me back to where I was. Not where the snake actually is. So. If I want to choose again, I can do that by clicking that. Or we can just go back to the jungle. Um, so... Playing on hard mode is actually really, really difficult. Uh, way beyond what you would say a three-year-old could do, unless they just have played this game backwards and forward and have memorized everything. In fact, some of the hard modes in these games have proven themselves to be difficult enough that they might appeal or entertain adults. So it might be for the parents, specifically. So anywhere here in this map this thing could be but in comparison hey hey knowledge buddy if Let's i just play a game uh you may very well as a parent get annoyed by hearing these little lines. how hard do you want the game to be you come over here and click easy it will pick Hello an item there. let's play find it here's your first item it's now going to pick another item. Now, let's see if you can find it. And this time on easy, it's going to take you right to where it is. a picture of the item. It's somewhere in this area. So, uh, so here's the item right here. Click on it and it says yay and then Congratulations! Picks a new item. You found it! Let's find another! Which gives you twice as much mileage out of the game this game because Okay, let's you see now if you can find this one. Double Good the luck. reasons why you would scroll through the multiple, multiple areas. Down below <laughs> is a picture of the item. It's somewhere in this area. What's interesting here is that Finding items and clicking on them is a core concept in point-and-click adventure games, and this is 
built on a point and click adventure game engine. So, it, ready you to play start another to understand, game? All you gotta do is uh, pick one. Why? This would be a good introductory. Do to, you want to play easy, uh, medium, or hard? To some of those more difficult point and click adventure games, but not really because uh, you still need to Hello go there. through like Let's Pajama Sam Here's and your first Putt item. Putt and uh, let's see. Now let's see if you can find Spy it. Spy Fox, which are all humongous point and click adventure games for kids before you could work your way to something more mature like The Secret of the Monkey Island or uh, um, or like, I don't know, maybe the uh, Sam and Max series, things that are really for adults, then there's still a lot of concepts that would have to be introduced. So on medium, we are not in the same area at all so the the only difference between medium and hard is the difficulty do you want to play another game specific items let's check out the trivia for a while do you want to play easy medium or hard and so this i believe the difficulty levels on trivia is just the questions difficulty let's see I'll try it on hard first. Are you ready for some trivia? Not only do knowledge bugs like to answer questions, we love to ask them too. That's how we get to learn so much great stuff. And see that now, line is I'm gonna the ask same you some in all three games. And you can tell me the answers. Good luck. And what's interesting here is you can have it read read aloud. A piece of stone that hang from the ceiling or of the caves are icicles, arches, stalactites, or bats. Actually kind of an easy question. If they had had stalactites and stalagmites bats. next to each other, that would have been a problem. The pieces of stone that hang from the ceilings of caves are called icicles, arches, stalactites, bats. But see, if you need it read to you, I'm not sure kids that couldn't read would be able to answer the questions either. Uh, some kids certainly would be, but it seems almost like a backward step in logical progression to say, well, they can't read, but they would be able to an answer the question. Bingo! Uh, we can click here for a little bit of introduction again. Choose the best answer! Or well, explanation. It's, it's almost like a help thing. When animals scare enemies by stamping and its feet and hissing. Hmm. I don't even know what the a tin wreck is. But you can look it up and cheat by coming to the index. And I suppose it's not cheating. It's using the resources given to you to come over here and say, well, I don't know what a tin wreck is. So... Tarsier, ten wreck. Click here and stamping. Let's see. When swallow frighten. Ten wrecks try to frighten enemies away by bristling their stiff hair, stamping their feet, and showing their teeth with a big kiss. Ah, so it is the ten wreck. So it's a it's a high level of research here to find the right answer. And if you get the wrong answer, it really doesn't punish you too much, just makes a sound that puts an X, and then it the goes. The answer is the ten wreck. Try this one. And so that's uh, how many legs do a scorpion have? It's six. But uh, that's hey, hey, hard. Knowledge buddy. And that's Let's play a pretty game. difficult. That's like an adult Go level, ahead and choose a level of difficulty. And what does what do you call a bird's home? A nest. Here's an easy question. So what Super What this shows is that this? if you wanted to answer all one hundred of the questions or how many ever they've got, you're probably going to have to either 
uh, play it on easy, medium, and hard for about 30 questions, or it's going to eventually go from easy questions to hard questions even though you're playing on easy. Stick insects got their name because they look like sticks. There we go. Good answer! Uh, recently they've Ready to discovered play game? that a lot of kids All by the time they get one. to kindergarten, they don't know how to use mice anymore because people use cell phones and tablets and they assume everything is a touch screen. So an old game like this, a 22 year old game that still pretty much stands the test of time pretty well, uh, would be very hey, good to sneakily train a kid to play uh, a game and use a mouse. Uh, this, and that is a underappreciated uh, concept. So trivia questions, three of 100. So you probably would have to play 30 questions or 33 and a third questions on easy, 33 and a third on medium, and 33 and a third on hard. Interesting, I didn't know that it would do a little animation here while we were on the screen. Uh, so those are the default Let's ones. Let's play another game! Uh, you did are the same on let's explore the airport and let's explore the farm. Let's see what jungle jumble is. What level do you want to play? We'll just try it on hard. This game is jungle jumble. Try to unscramble these words. Click on a letter to pick it up. Hmm. Move it to where you want it and click again to put it down. So it's just As a you jumble. get the letters right, the picture unscrambled. On this level, everything starts out scrambled. Have fun! The word is... Scarlet Ibis. Now, unscramble it. Well, that's quite easy. But let's see. This is actually a very easy form of this, even, let's see, Scarlet, and the, all you have to do is move the things around, and that's on hard. S C A R L E T I B I S, Scarlet Ibis. So, you have a slight issue with having the subtitles on here because if it the says word is, the word is iguana, iguana, you see it right now, there. Now, unscramble it. Uh, normally, I suppose you would, for this game, you would want the subtitles turned off, which, okay. I guess they didn't really think of that. I G U. A N A Iguana. So if Iguana, if this is it on hard, let's see what it's like on easy. Do you want to play easy? The word is bug. Now unscramble it. Oh, so on easy, it just automatically tells you how to spell it, anyways. And that's a really. G small word bug. three letters the word is snail so now unscramble it let's just see how it works in medium do you want to play e the word is crocodile hmm. now unscramble it so in this time it's it's just medium difficulty words that aren't terribly uh, misorganized. What What's interesting here is the O. If I put one O in the wrong place, 
Will that mess it up? Let's see, C R O C I. So we have one O that would work, or one O that would work. So it works either way. B R O C O D I L E crocodile. B. The word is So this is mostly a spelling flower. game. Now uh, unscramble it. Probably a little bit better than a hangman game and let's explore the Do you wanna flower. play another game? Because I felt the hangman was just a little too complicated for young kids. Let's see anteater. Welcome to Anteater Feeder. There's a lot this of game, interface here. You're a hungry anteater trying to get lunch. Keep an eye on the face at the bottom of the screen. It will show you if you like what you're eating. The tongue shows you how much energy you have. And the picture of the anteater shows you how full you are. Let's get started. Yeah, this is Level way too complicated. One. You again. need to get five of these two points. So, it's just clicking on these things, I suppose. This is very fast paced for a game that's been not very, not timed at all up to this point. Uh, it's not incredibly difficult for somebody you got like me. You 20 and needed 5. But Good job! Level for a three-year-old, you need to get learning to use a mouse. Of these two, that's points. Not exactly what I was expecting here. And it's a pretty complicated thing. Apparently, he likes the pies too, so we'll take that. And there's only three lanes of this, it seems, even if one lane decides to come the other direction. So it doesn't seem like this will get too crazy. I don't know if an ant eater really could eat pie. Hmm. See, you got I don't know what the tongue energy concept is. Five is good job. Level three. You need to get six of these two points. And this will just go up and up and up. And let's see if I use all of the energy, then, then he becomes exhausted for a while. So you can't just sit here and click the wrong thing. How about a glass of milk? He'll eat that too. Interesting. Let me ask, let me see if I exhaust a bunch of uh, energy and then drink milk. Uh, it refills the energy. You got 18 and needed six. Good job. Level now there was four. no real difficulty. You need to get six. Here. Of these so just two. let's go ahead and click and skip this. If we exit and then click here again. Do you want to continue or start at level one? Hmm. So it's up to you as to whether you want to let's continue play another or game. start again. So you can move that hey, score let's see how you're doing. up higher and higher. And again you can't print, so that kind of sucks, and you can reset any any point. Now we go back to the jungle, and let's just go back to everything. So I haven't really gone in, in crazy directions, clicking on things, clicking on all this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still a ton of things to see, certainly, in this game. But overall, like the other, let's, uh, let's visit, let's explore. I forgot what the name of the series was. It's a very forgetful name it's too long it's like 
let's explore the jungle with Buzzy, a character that never was really popular. Uh, and thus, they don't even name it that in Steam. It's just called Let's, let's Explore the Jungle. And then in brackets and parentheses, it's, it's Junior Field Trips. Uh, like the other ones, this one is perfectly fine. 22 years later, very good. It's going to teach your kids some pretty specific information as far as those index words. Less useful and practical for a three-year-old probably. But if they've already played the two previous ones, I wouldn't have a problem with them playing this one too. I would just say definitely do the farm one first. And then once they have burned out on the farm one, do the airport one then do the jungle one uh, overall it has the same program all three of these games were released in the same year which was quite a fast turnaround for games uh, same problems you the kid can click quit which means there's no, and there's no way to lock that out so that's a problem it will ask you the scum vm will say are you sure so you can hit no but uh, that's in such tiny print at this resolution you can barely even read it uh, there's no timer to say tell the kid that they've been playing for too long there's no clock on there so they can't tell the time or know that they have been playing too long so that that's unfair uh, a little bit there's uh, there's no let's see I guess that's kind of all it's really missing. If it had those two features, that it would work pretty well. Uh, even today, it still works pretty well. It's just kind of wish you could get rid of the quit button. That's the only thing that really matters, and most people are going to complain. And some of the information might be a little old, and they may get in kindergarten, and the kindergarten teachers may say that what they're saying is, is not right, and that could cause some consternation. But more than likely that will never actually occur and so uh, it seems like of the very small opportunities to find some edutainment software on Steam or on PC at all or even when it's not on PC trying to find edutainment on uh, on cell phones also doesn't happen very often too it's better than sticking in front of a mindless game or just having them watch YouTube or something like that uh, not to shoot myself in the foot uh, it's pretty good so that's going to be it for the spotlight as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you go to my main YouTube page there's that subscribe button and the bell you need to click to get notifications also on the right is a button that says support this channel. Notice how the audio cuts out and then loops back in. That's obviously a bug. I haven't seen that in any of the other games. Uh, also on my main YouTube page is a playlist tab that has a playlist for every game I've ever covered. Finally, down below in the description box I have links to all my social media sites. So please follow and friend me on all of those. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.